So let's say you're new to my math lab and you're trying to find your way around your online course. The first thing you'll notice when you sign into my math lab and you go to your class is this is the course home screen here. And one of the things you'll see is this upcoming assignments. And it only puts three assignments up there and it puts the three that are the oldest assignments that have been up the longest that are due the soonest. And so you see I have two due on October 30th, one due on November 1st. There are more assignments due after November 1st. However, it's only showing those three. Uh, once I complete these two on October 30th, it will show me two new assignments. Additionally, up here you've got a calendar and so you can see these blue dots and these green uh, squares. I call them a square. It's more of a rhombus. But anyway, a um, little green square here. And you see some of these have clocks and some of these don't. When you see a blue dot, that means that something's available. And if you mouse over, it shows you what becomes available. So on October 28th, two homework assignments became available. This one with the clock means something is due. So on October 30th, two items are due and one item became available. On November 1st, one item is due and two items, a homework and a test, became available. It also shows you how soon something's due. So this 13 hours is this first assignment. So that's all right here. And of course, if there are any online announcements, those would be here under announcements. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing you'll see is homework. You've got this button here for homework. If you want to do a homework assignment, that's where you would click. And if you go to homework, you'll see all of the homework that I've assigned in this class so far. And to the left hand side, you see when it's due. Okay, so that's very, very important to see when it's due. Instead of using the calendar, I actually like to click the homework button. And when I click the homework button, I can actually go in and see, okay, look, this is due on the 30th, this is due on the 30th, this is due on the 1st, the 4th, the 6th, the 6th, the 8th. Boom, 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 boom. Um, time limit is blank because I don't time homeworks, but if you had an instructor that did, there would be a time limit. Attempts is blank because I allow unlimited attempts. If you had an instructor who only allowed five attempts, it would say five. And then, of course, you have score here. These four assignments haven't, uh, have no grade and they're past due, and so they show past due. Now, there's another button over here, quizzes and tests, and if I click on that, that'll show any quizzes or tests that my instructor has posted, and I see I have one test for this course already up. But you have another option. If you go back to homework and, and you see homework is in yellow, if I click quizzes and tests, I get that same chapter one test or I can click show all. And if I click show all, it actually intermingles my tests and quizzes with my homework. And so when I'm trying to figure out what's due and when it's due, I go to homework and click show all. And you see next to this chapter one test, I've got zero of one, which means there's only one attempt. Time limit is still blank, which means there's no time limit. So that's the first thing. The second thing is gradebook. If you go to gradebook, it'll show all of your grades. Now this is my gradebook. Since I'm the instructor, I have no grades. You would have a list of grades here. The one thing you won't have here is your average. If you want to see your average in a My Math Lab course, you'll click on Show Overall Score. Since I have no grades, my overall score is zero. I'm not doing well. Um, the other thing you'll see that you need to be aware of in My Math Lab is chapter contents. Chapter contents, if you click on this and expand it, breaks your textbook down into chapters. So let's say I go to chapter one. It actually breaks chapter one into sections. So let's say I go to chapter one, section four. Okay. Chapter one, section four, I can watch a video presentation and I can access the ebook. So if I click on multimedia e text, that is the ebook. And so if you only purchased a My Math Lab code and you click on multimedia e text, that's how you would actually read your book. Okay. So that's the second thing. Um, a third thing that you need to be aware of is Tools for Success. Tools for Success is something that Pearson puts on here. That's the people who publish your book. And they have different activities that you can work on, graphing calculator help, that sort of thing. Um, some people find this useful. Uh, another one is Multimedia Library. 
the multimedia library allows you to access everything that came with your textbook. So let's go to chapter 1, section 4, and let's say I want to search animations and videos. Click find now. And I go to chapter 1.4 example videos and I click. Now this is going to open a new window. There are six example videos that came with my textbook for chapter 1, section 4. And so if you miss a day of class, um, or if you have an online class, um, these videos are going to be the equivalent of you attending. So that's very, very important. Keep that in mind. So that's kind of the just. There's a few other things in here like discussion where you can contact your instructor, or your classmates, that sort of thing. And I'll let you play around with those. However, those are the ones you really need. The multimedia library, the chapter contents, the homework, and the gradebook. If you can activate those four buttons, if you can work those four buttons, you can find your way around my math lab and do quite well in a course that's either hybrid or online. Um, be very careful. I'm a Firefox user. Be very careful. A lot of times you'll go to play these example videos or you'll go to click on a link and you'll get a little pop-up bar that shows up at the very top of your screen here. It says a pop-up was blocked. You have to have your pop-up blocker disabled for my math lab to work well. And a lot of things in my math lab run off of Flash Player or QuickTime or Java. So you have to make sure you have all these plugins up to date. And every now and then you'll get a little red warning in the web address bar of Firefox. And if that happens, typically you can activate that plugin. Firefox has deactivated it for one reason or another. So anyway, um, that's kind of a quick overview of my math lab. And I hope it helps you. If you have any questions, please let me know.